trading, I think it's fair to say that most of us go for the highest liquidity most of the time, whether it's stocks, options, futures. Whether you're trading Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA, or the SPY and SPX, the QQQ, or their corresponding futures, or even crude oil, the Dow, Russell, we all like to trade high liquidity. What goes with high liquidity is usually gamma exposure, and each of these products have options that trade a ton of volume, right? If you have a product that trades a lot of options, it could even be Carnival Cruise Line or Bank of America, JP Morgan, all sorts of different names. It's not just super limited to the cream of the crop, so to speak, but understanding gamma exposure and how it can change the character of the market in certain situations. That's what we're going to be going over in this video. In my 10 plus years of trading experience, gamma exposure to me has been the most valuable tool that I've added to my tool belt. And my goal in this video is to open the market up like a watch. Let's see how the gears turn within the market. Anyone that has to be delta hedged, how do they change the character of the market and how it behaves? Okay. With that being said, here's a disclaimer. Pause this, read through this. So I thought it would be fun to go to ChatGPT and just ask it, how do we even know that market makers hedge in a delta neutral fashion? You know, I've personally heard it from market makers myself, but this is what it said. One, it's industry practice. Two, there's regulatory compliance that influences it. They try to make money on the bid ask spread. Public disclosures, they have said themselves that they use this and expert analysis. So there's research, analyst, and academic papers that reference market makers using Delta hedging. So here I went to NASDAQ and I pulled up 2022's option volume, volume per underlying, right? If you look at SPY and SPX, put those together you're going to have probably a third of this. Now, if you put the big ETFs like IWM, QQQ, HYG, other ETFs, SPY and SPX together, you have almost half of all options that get traded. Now, other than that, we have the big tech names, Apple, Amazon, AMD, Facebook, or now Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla. And then another, say, 40% of the pie is all the other stocks in the whole stock market. Okay. On this next slide here, I have the historical options volume over 50 years. So since about 1975, increased options activity is here to stay. And that just gives us better data when it comes to using gamma exposure. Okay. The more options that are traded, the more delta hedging that has to go on. So that gives us more of an edge when we understand this. Now, need to know, first off, what do market makers do? Market makers provide liquidity and they help with price stability. They're constantly buying and selling, helping make the market more efficient. What else do they do? They reduce your transaction cost, makes it cheaper for us to trade, but they also have to manage the risk. We're going to get into how it affects the market. First off, let's just take a look and see how much money goes through the SPY in a given day. How much notional value? Here's how many options have traded today. Okay. 8 million. Now an option is worth a hundred shares. So if we take 8 million times a hundred shares, we have 887 million shares equivalent traded today. And let's say it's worth $500. It's close enough. That's $443 billion that has to be hedged on this given day. That's not taking into account the open interest, which is much higher than just the volume most days. Now, if we just assume the average delta for all of these options to be zero to 60 delta right now, okay? So let's say we just multiply this, say it's by 0.33 delta average. So 33 shares of the 100 have to be hedged on a given day. It's $146 billion with a B. 146 billion, 420 million. That's just SPY. Look at SPX. 3 million total today. 3 million for SPX times 100, it would be the equivalent of 100 shares at $5,000. It's $1.6 trillion that have to be hedged. Now let's follow the same logic, multiply that by 0.33, that's still $552 billion. That is a huge amount of money, half a billion dollars up to $1.6 trillion. You know, that's like having to hedge a whole Facebook, Amazon, Something like that in a day just for SPX options, okay? That's why this is important. QQQ follows the same concept. Anything that has very liquid options, it's kind of like, is it the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog, okay? The options market's like the tail wagging the dog, so to speak. Think about it that way. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into gamma. Why is it important? So gamma is directly tied to delta. It's how quickly the delta is going to change on these option positions. Market makers try to minimize any market risk they have in their position by limiting exposure, this is done via 
delta hedging. Delta hedging is pretty much continuous trading. Let's say you're a market maker and you have a lot of options on your books. You're going to hedge SPY and SPX by buying and selling ES futures, which is part of the reason why we included ES futures, NASDAQ futures in our app. We also have Russell, crude oil, and gold. So quick side note on that. SPY and SPX, we convert the levels in real time to the real time futures levels to the literal tick. All right, for gold, GLD, ETF, we convert those levels to GC, gold futures. For USO, the oil ETF, we convert that to crude oil. For IWM, we convert that to RTY. And for the Dow Jones, diamonds, DIA, we convert that to YM. What positive gamma is? Do you ever wonder why we usually don't go parabolic on up moves? And heard the saying, we take the stairs up and the elevator down. Positive gamma, how does it work? Once we get above this line... Let's say we have stock and it just did this. Say it had a candle back here, just crossed above. And we're now in positive gamma. Okay, what's going to happen? Well, the market makers, when the stock price rises, as it did here, they sell into it. Okay, so let's say it comes up. They're going to be selling. Okay. Now let's say it does this. You get a little wick. It does this, comes down. It comes down a little more. Then they're going to start buying stocks. Okay. So let's say we just have one market maker for right now. Stock price rose. They sold it. Now the stock price drops. They are buying it again. So then we might see this. Okay. All right. Now what happens? Spike up a little. They sell it. Then they start buying it again. Then you just get these grinding up moves. You might get a broadening formation type thing. See, we come out, take out the previous lows, whatever, but then they start buying it again. And it just, it's kind of a choppy day. How often have you all seen something like this? All the time. So that is a quick example of positive gamma. As you can see here, this is uh, March 26th, 24, SPY. We open at the first green. We go kind of sideways, stair step up a little bit, pretty much just like that picture I drew a minute ago. And I did not look at this right before I drew that, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but see, we stay at this first green, okay? It acts as support a few times throughout this, okay? And then all of a sudden, we break below it, kind of stay below it for a second time. You know, we broke below back here, but got right back above it. This is a one minute chart, by the way. So we hit it, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. You had plenty of opportunity to go short if other things were lining up. And the thing that signifies to me that, you know, this could be a decent short. Is it just, it could not get up to this PG level and it was not far away at all. It's a dollar away. When it's that close, it should have no problem getting up there. However, what happened? We get to the ZG, CG level, and it, we just take the elevator. Down we go. All right. Not a huge move compared to what we've had lately, but decent size. Now, what happens when you're in negative gamma? When you're in negative gamma, here you have our market makers again. Let's say we're this one. Stock price rises, we buy stocks, okay? This one's responsible for the V-shape recovery. Let's just say that. This is going to be the V-shape, all right? That's when that happens. However, we have other market makers that for a negative gamma, stock price drops, sell more stocks, then it drops, and then they have to sell more, and it drops more, and they have to sell more, and it drops, they have to sell. But then when it stops, if the stock price rises, they get stuck in this loop. That's what causes the linear character, the linear moves in the market. Now, we can also get into a similar situation if we're above the PG level. That's what can make things go parabolic. Let's say we have zero gamma is this line, right? And then let's say we have the max positive gamma line up here, and then we have the negative gamma line here, right? What you'll see a lot of the times is we'll come straight down, it'll stay here for a second, and then bounce, okay? Get this V-shape recovery, and then we do this. Forgive my drawing. See, so we're just kind of taking the stairs up, right? And then we get here. A lot of the time, we'll reject it. However, sometimes you'll get something like NVIDIA. When you break above this, you get something like that. What is causing that, when you get above this PG level, it can kind of turn into a negative gamma type situation where it's like, oh, okay, the book flipped. Now we have to buy as it goes up to continue hedging. Okay. 
So in summary, we have the ZG here, and let's act like this is a stock chart. This is kind of the dynamics happening behind the candles. Think of it that way. So we're in positive gamma, stock price goes up, sell stocks. Then it goes down, price drops, then they buy stocks. Then the stock price goes up, they sell stocks, you know, over and over. We just... All right, this is more straight line. You know, you get this. Just like I showed you, okay? We're in negative gamma. Remember, we get these kind of moves. All right, very quick, very volatile. This chart here is the behind the scenes for these bars, okay? These white lines here are your gamma flip point, okay? So the gamma flip point, as you can see, we get under this, they've kind of got to sell, 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 but then it levels out here. This is where it levels out at, this here also, right? So if we were to flip this to where it looked like that other chart, it would be something like this, right? So a lot of the time, this will act as support. We get down to here, there's really nothing left to hedge down here. All right, what you want to pay attention to is if we get to this point, let's say we're here. If there's a ton of puts being added at the current price and below the current price, that's what would give us fuel to continue down. This is the old school original version of Hedge Pulse. This is when it was just my personal thing and before I turned it into what it is now. So many long nights, many. May 22nd, GEX chart. Here we have PG at 421. The zero gamma was this white line, and NG was 419. What we had, quite this negative gamma squeeze. The NG level transformed into the 410 throughout this day, as you will see here. NG level, 410. This was May 24th. Turned into the NG level. Stop on a dime. Go back up to the ZG level. And this up here turned into the PG on the next day. Let me show you that. So, okay, May 25th, 414. That is this day. The screenshot was taken right here. This was the PG level. We get above PG, it can turn into a gamma squeeze. Now, let's look at some other stuff has happened here more recently. So, in this short video I made, we started off in negative gamma territory. Come down, we hit the NG level. We have a V-top recovery, very straight line. And then, we get up here to zero gamma, barely break above it. Try to push up to the first screen, fail, and a pretty much straight line back down to NG. It happens all the time. Check this out. I'm going to bring this over. This is a current spy chart. And oh boy, is it ugly out here. But what happened the day before? So on this given day, I pulled up these right here. Okay. And I put those in. And I did that just because there wasn't really any of these levels that we were close to. Right? However, what did I know? I knew that we were in negative gamma. Right? I knew we were in negative gamma. Now, as you can see, overnight, we ran up to PG for the today's traded, and then we pushed down. Why? From this white line here, we're in negative gamma territory. We push down to NG, you know, that's usually the target. Usually, it'll bounce there, find some bit of support unless we have continued selling pressure. Now, let's get into that. Kind of like today. If they don't have much of a bounce at NG. See, there was a ton of choppiness right under ng they tried they tried they tried all right they just they they just couldn't do it they could not get it back above ng substantially anyway that is a brief summary for why you should use gamma exposure in your trading now the newest update is live and we do offer on both sides in the command center left and right real-time level conversion for spy spx QQQ, IWM, the Dow Jones, gold, and USO, which converts to crude oil. And in the stock centers, you can load up whatever you want. We have ETFs you can pick from. We have all the spotters here. We have leveraged ETFs, technology sector, or you can just go in here, top in whatever you want. Let's say you want Carnival, hit CCL, hit the enter button. Anyway, to sign up, go to our website, hedgepulse.com. Use the code SAVE25 to get your first month 25% off. See y'all next time.